When you're a victim of a crime, the pain and trauma can often be compounded by trying to navigate the very system that you turn to for help. Denise Pena became a radical supporter of user-centered design when she turned to the very system that she worked in for help. In 2017, Code for America launched a fellowship in Multnomah County, Oregon, and together built Case Companion, a resource portal for crime victim survivors. Please join me in welcoming Denise Pena to the stage. Good morning. We're going to start off with a little exercise. Um, you don't have to tell me how you know your Miranda rights, but how many of you can this, recite your Miranda rights? At least get the first couple lines out. Show of hands. I, I, right All right, good, good. Thank you. Now, same exercise with a show of hands. How many of you, know, would, of you would know your rights as a crime victim if you were a victim of a crime in your jurisdiction? There we go. <laughs> so victims' rights vary state by state. Some are better than others. In Oregon, we actually have some pretty strong rights to protect crime victims, both in statute and in our Oregon Constitution. In Oregon, a victim's rights to justice includes to be treated with dignity and respect and to play a meaningful role in the criminal justice system. Good laws, great intentions, but well-intended laws that don't have the policies and procedures to back them up aren't going to help, and in fact, they're going to further hurt. The only time the criminal justice system engages with crime victims is when we need something from them. I need you to file a police report. I need you to come into grand jury. I need you to come to trial and testify. And it is also going to ask victims to fragment their experiences. It asks them to relive their experiences during investigation, at trial, and then again at sentencing, and this does not take into account the re-traumatization that our system is currently set up to do to a victim. And what's worse is that the government appears to stop caring after sentencing when we don't need anything further from that victim. And I know this to be personally true. It was in 2007 when I was working as a parole officer in our domestic violence unit in Portland, Oregon. It was a summer day when my then 10-year-old child disclosed to me that she had been sexually abused by my then husband, who I was in the middle of separating from. As a mandatory reporter, I had to report my own family to Child Protective Services because of the abuse that I was aware of that had occurred to a child. It, I would be lying if I didn't admit that for longer than a split second, I hesitated making that report because I knew what was gonna happen. They were going to re cross report it to law enforcement and the system was going to intervene whether I wanted it to or not and I was gonna lose control of what was gonna happen at probably one of the darkest times for my family. As a crime victim, I opted in for all my rights available under the law, and I tried to utilize the notification system the government said that it would provide. At sentencing, I heard the judge say 36 months. Due to my work in the system, I knew that 36 was most likely gonna be 24, and so I safety planned around that. But I was blindsided due to being somebody who was very proactive and also having that knowledge of how the sentencing dates can change. I checked dates and I checked them frequently. I learned that 36 did indeed become 24. And then I learned that 36 to 24 became 11 months. I could anticipate 24. I wasn't prepared for 11 months. Oh, and I had 90 days notice that the release was going to happen. So at that point, the system really didn't seem to care about me, or even more importantly, what it had told me what was gonna happen. We need government to deliver services to crime victims in a way that understands what they actually need, including how trauma occurs and how we heal. Because for victims of crime, the trauma isn't going to end at sentencing because now a conviction has occurred. It's gonna continue. Asking victims to fragment their experiences into what is needed for sentencing does not create the space victims need to heal and move forward. So let's imagine a system that is both trauma-informed and resiliency-focused. We can do better. We must. I believe in government and the vital role it plays to crime victims. This is the work that I do as the manager of victim services unit in Multnomah County. We work with victims post-conviction. We help victims navigate the criminal justice system. We help victims find the information they need as they are creating those important safety plans while going through a healing process. And I believe that technology can help support me and the government in delivering the services to crime victims in a trauma-informed way. Case Companion. 
is an example of the kind of digital services that is helping the government provide this very important information to crime victims in our county. With Case Companion in hand, I can reach more crime victims, and more importantly, government can be more transparent on what is actually going to happen. Case Companion is helping Oregonians realize the promise of the Crime Victims' Bill of Rights. For survivors, it becomes all more important that we help government get the implementation right. This means a criminal justice system designed to be user-centered, trauma-informed, and resiliency-focused. It's the least we can do to provide services to crime victims with the dignity and respect that we deserve. After all, it is a law. Thank you.